Well, hello everyone. My name is Sonia Trevino and I am the broker and CEO of the Houston Homes Legacy Group. I have been licensed for almost 30 years now and have, uh, along with my team and my agents, have helped over 2,000 families in the Houston and all the surrounding areas. Today, I would like to explain to you how you can file for your homestead exemption and I will be helping y'all with Montgomery County today. You can always refer to my Harris County uh, video on YouTube. Um, so let's get started. So the very first thing you want to do is you want to go to mcad.org and mcad is for Montgomery County Appraisal District. So once you're on the website, you're going to go to a tab that says exemptions. And once you uh, click on it, you're going to see homestead exemptions and that will take you to the form and you're going to want to go down to where it says that you can apply either by mail if you prefer to do that or you can do online. So today I'm going to show you how you can do it online. Okay, so once you press online, it's going to take you to another list of available forms and you're going to want to go to the one that says Homestead Exemption. So once that loads, you just start filling out the year that you're applying for. For in this case, we would file for 2023. So you're going to go ahead and click on 2023. And the next question is going to be, are you filing a late application? So if you're doing for 2023, then you're not going to be late. You're on time. Okay. So you go through, you answer all these questions. Cooperative housing would only apply if you're, you're living in homes that are bought through a syndicate or some kind of cooperative housing, which should not be the case. If it is, you can always reach out to me. So that would be no. And then the next question is, uh, were you receiving a homestead exemption on your previous residence? More than likely you would have. So let's gonna go ahead and go with yes. Uh, are you transferring an exemption from a previous address? More than likely you're gonna put yes. Tax limitation, mm, it's gonna be no, um, most of the time. Again, you can always reach out. The next section would be your address. So you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and fill all that out. And then we go to number two. Number two is the different type of exemptions that you are seeking. So more than likely, uh, if you just purchased a home, you're gonna be checking off the box that goes in front of general residence homestead exemption. And of course, if you are a disabled person, you can always uh, click on that also. And then you have age 65 or older. So there are several exemptions that the county does allow you to apply for. In this case, these three are the most common, okay? Once you have checked off all the boxes of all the exemptions you qualify for, it's gonna start asking for your information as the owner of the property, and that's section three applicant information. So you're gonna put, if you're a single adult, if you're a married couple, fill that out. Then you're gonna put the property address and your contact information. If you are uh, receiving mail at a different address, go ahead and fill out where it says applicant's mailing address. And once you have selected or filled out all those boxes, you're gonna go to the right at the top and you're gonna check off if you are an active duty uh, military or if you're, an exempt, um, if you're exempt from the requirement to provide your driver's license for any reason. Um, once you have checked those off, it will ask you for an ID and remember that your driver's license or ID has to reflect the address that's on the property that you are seeking the exemption for. So that's where you would fill out the number or social security and then make sure and take a picture of your driver's license and you're going to upload it into this section and that's how they will be able to verify that you are actually living on the property that you are seeking the exemption for. Um, if you're married, it's going to ask for your spouse's driver's license also. So you're going to go through the same exact step. You're going to fill out the birth date, well, her name of course, and birth date, and her contact information or his, and you're going to upload a picture of the driver's license. Okay. Section four refers to the property information. It's going to ask you some questions as far as when you acquired the property, when you first began to occupy the property, the property ID, and the number of acres of the property. Normally, if you're buying in a just a, a normal uh, community, a master plan community, it's usually gonna be one fourth. It's about 7,000 square feet is the size of an average lot in master plan communities. 
And then of course it's going to ask you for the physical address of the property. And you're going to go ahead and fill all that out. And then it's going to ask you if your name appears on the actual deed that was recorded at the courthouse. So you're going to check yes or no. And then it's also going to ask you if you uh, if the property uh, for which the application is submitted is was it an heir uh, was it inherited so you just check yes or no and then are you as an heir going to occupy the property that would be the next question so um, as i said you continue to answer those questions if the property is a manufactured home more than likely it's going to ask you for It's going to ask you if you are an heir and if you are it's going to ask you if you're going to occupy the property then there's also a question on here that's asking if it's a manufactured home or a mobile home if it is then it's going to ask that you provide some kind of documentation as you know manufactured homes or mobile homes have serial numbers and uh, they are treated differently so it will ask you for that information in this next box on uh, section 5. If you own other personal property, uh, residential property, I'm sorry, in the state of Texas, you are also asked that you list these uh, information here and provide any supporting documentation for those properties. So we're almost done. All that you need to do now is you put your name, your title, your printed name, and then it's going to ask you to do an e-sign. It's uh, electronic signatures and it will ask for the date that you sign this document. So. That is it as far as filling it out. Once you submit it, you should get a confirmation saying that they received your application to apply for the homestead. And that would be it. I would recommend that you go back maybe two, three months afterwards and go to MCAT and look up your property and see that you are receiving the homestead exemption just to verify that you were able to get it. So thank you so much for watching my video. I really hope that this helps when it comes to filling out your homestead exemption. And don't forget, you can always reach out to me and please uh, go to our channel and subscribe to it. It is a great help to us. And we totally enjoy doing these videos uh, for you. And don't forget that you can always reach out to me on the information listed on here on the video, either my email or by phone number. Thank you so much. Have a great day.